to you. I'm going to try to help you and to fight like this biggest question. Full suspension versus hard tail. Today we'll be putting the Polygon Extrata 24 up against its dual suspension sibling, the Cisco D24. Comparing hard tails to full suspension is like comparing apples and oranges. They really are very different. But you might encounter this when you're coming across having to buy a decent hard tail or an entry level full suspension. The Extrata sells at 1299 AUD, but the D24 retails at 1799. At the time of this filming, the Extrata was on sale for 1099, and that was also on sale for 1199. So that's actually just $100 different. Later in the video, I'm gonna show you which one I might pick, and it might surprise you. What are the good and bad about full suspension and hardtail? Full suspension bikes generally have more comfort on the technical descent than hardtails because you have that rear shock to absorb all the small, intricate bumps if you set it up properly. Hardtails, on the other hand, tend to give all the ground to the rider. So you have to use all the leg suspension that you have to absorb on the rocky terrains. On, but, it's more efficient on the climb because you tend to put down all the power that you have to your legs to the drivetrain. All your downward stroke on a full suspension would tend probably go to the rear shock, which will absorb some of your energy, which on long rides can be quite annoying. Full suspensions tend to have more traction because they keep the back wheel on the ground, which is quite helpful because it can improve control and speed. Hardtails with the rigid rear may lose the rear traction on uneven or technical terrain. All that extra hardware has a weight penalty. There has to be more welds in the frame because it has to be stronger, there's more bolts, and that rear shock really has to be maintained because every 50 hours of riding you have to service that rear shock. The bearings on the frame need special attention while watching the bike and they need to be inspected, serviced, or replaced regularly. Full suspensions shine when it comes to descending. It doesn't just absorb impacts on the trail. It actually improves your confidence while going over rocket terrain. I mean, like, it could improve your riding skills too. That's what I felt when I just got my first dual suspension. I'm not saying that hardtails cut descent. I'm just saying that it will be a lot more bumpy and challenging. But a lot of people argue that this is helpful to improve technical skill and riding position. One of the biggest advantages of hardtails is the price. Generally, hardtails are cheaper than full suspension bikes, but if you're gonna pay someone to maintain the full suspension, it's gonna cost you a lot more. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty of these two bikes. Let's start with the drivetrain. Both of them have a microshift clutch drivetrain with the Xtrada having a top line 10 speed Avid X, which has a 11 to 42 tooth Sunrace cassette, while the D24 has a Acolyte 8 speed 12 to 42 teeth cassette. There's only a one tooth difference on the smallest cog. So the range is pretty similar. It's just that you've got more gears on the Advent X and the shifter and the clutch tension is way better on the Extrada. So I think the hardtail gets this one. The Extrada has particularly better brakes with the particularly unknown and underrated Clark's M2 hydraulic disc brakes. While the D34 has unfortunately mechanical texture disc brakes. In terms of absolute power, they're about the same, but the hydraulic brakes require much less power to press the brakes, which is essential for kids that don't have enough power to operate with one or two fingers. It is also essential to have good modulation on the technical sections of the trail, which I can tell you, it is pretty much impossible to do with the D24. Both bikes have air forks, which is really excellent because you can adjust it to your weight. The Xtrada has lighter and smaller 
SR Centaur XCR 80 mil, and the D24 has the Centaur Radon 32, which is a much bigger 120 mil travel. The Radon 32 has compression and reverb adjustment, which is helpful to choose how you want your bike to ride on different terrains. Like you can make it more poppy or slower rebound to absorb big hits. It does have a 26 fork, so if you want to put a 26 wheel on there, then you can if you'd like to. Both are equipped with V-Tire Curve. The hard gel has a lighter and fast rolling crown gel, and the D24 is equipped with a knobby flush nut. For all in all grip, I would go for the flush nut, but that comes with expensive rolling resistance. So the Crown Gem is an XT tire, so it is better for covering long distances and smooth rides. The rest of the kit is very similar. Between the two, there is the saddle, seat post, handlebar, grips are pretty much identical. Overall, the choice of full suspension versus hardtail really comes down to what type of riding style are you and what do you ride. And if you're having trouble, leave us down a comment and we'll try to help you decide. There is no perfect bike, but I'll recommend the Xtrada 24 for anybody that's just really just getting new into mountain biking or they do a lot of dirt jumps like wheelies or like trials like you could be doing skills in your backyard and this bike would be perfect for just learning basic skills. The D24 is for the people that want to ride a bit rougher descents and they can ask their parents to get a tow up and they get help to maintain the bike. Both bikes are able to do decent trails. I was really having fun testing both of these bikes back to back. And I think the Xtrada is more cross country oriented and the D24 being a little more aggressive and trail oriented. So which one will I pick? Well, it might surprise you, but I would pick the Xtrada because it's a little better. It's lightweight, it's got better brakes and drivetrain. I was able to send bigger on the D24, but there's a big but. I think this bike might not really make sense. I get that they had to make some compromises to make it an affordable budget mountain bike, but if you really don't want to pay someone to maintain this bike for you, then I think the x is perfect for you. But if you really want a full suspension and you can have help for free or you can maintain the bike yourself, then go ahead. This bike should be perfect for you. I think throwing some hydraulic disc brakes on the D24 will make it a much, much better bike. If you can extend your budget a little bit more, then I think it'll be good to skip the D24 and go for the high model, the D24X. Check out the detailed review of the Xtrada 24 somewhere here. And the next video will be about comparing the D24 to a D24X. Please leave a comment if you got any questions. Until the next one, shoot hard, ride safe. See ya!